I got a package. This is from Brambleberry and I wasn't expecting this, so I have no idea what's inside of this. Oh, so Brambleberry sent me a Stanley mug or Stanley cup and it says Brambleberry on it. And I love this color. I don't own a Stanley cup, but they are all the rage right now. And I will definitely put this to good use. Thank you so much, Brambleberry. Look at that, it fits perfectly. Let's put some ice in there too. I did wash this before I used it in case you were wondering about that. So I opened my online shop yesterday and we have orders on the board and I promise you guys, I will show you me fulfilling those orders. But in this video, I'll also be showing you me making some lotion because I need to make some lotion because of some of the orders. I had a hemp body cream that sold really well when I was open and it's a good cream, but I really wanted to improve my products. And not only did I make this cream better, but this cream is the best best cream I've ever made and I love it so much. Kale is a fan. So you will see me making that today in this video in a couple of scents. Hey guys, we're at the lotion making stage where we are combining our waters and our oils together. I've just topped off this water with a little bit more warm water because a lot evaporates and you'd be surprised. For this particular batch, there is an extra 70 grams of water that had evaporated. And we're gonna be pouring our oils into our waters. And there's also emulsifier in here. And the emulsifier that I'm using is Polo Wax. It's a very reliable emulsifier that I really like. I'm gonna use a hand blender to mix everything. I hand blended this for about seven minutes and left it to cool to room temperature before moving on to the next step. So we are back and I tempt this lotion and it is now cool enough to add my heat sensitive cool down ingredients, which is awesome. And that includes my preservative. It includes some extracts and extras, some goodies that will make this lotion feel amazing on the skin. And to add it, I'm going to keep the lotion on the scale because I don't want any of that good stuff to be lost in another container. And I'm going to be very careful about pouring it. Just gonna add five grams of extract, five grams of liquid germal plus, which is the preservative that I'm using today. I added my extract, I added my preservative. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of vitamin E, which will make this so soothing on the skin. Stuff is like honey, comes out in very thick globs. You have to be kind of careful with it, with your pour. And now I'm going to mix everything in using my hand mixer again. So I mixed those ingredients in for at least five minutes. And what I'm doing now is scraping out the bowl to make sure all of that cream is exposed to the preservative. And you can see the texture of this cream is, is insane. It looks like this the next day too but I like to let the creams sit for at least 12 hours before I package them because I want to allow any air, sorry, any water that's in this to evaporate into the atmosphere and not to collect on the jar of the lotion and come raining back down onto the cream because that is a recipe for bacteria growth. You definitely don't want in your creams. So while this cream is a little bit warm, I'm going to split it into two, add fragrance oils to it so that I can scent it. Then I'm gonna set them aside so that they can further settle and then jar them tomorrow.
The next day I had to make a lot of foaming bath base for the many sugar scrubs I needed to stock, so I started off with some glycerin and dissolved some xanthan gum in it. Thank you to all the people who suggested I do this, it is much faster than dissolving the xanthan gum in water. This is a 3000 gram batch of foaming bath base, so I'm using a crock pot to melt everything down. This barely fit my batch, so if you're going to attempt this, keep an eye on it, as it might bubble over if you're not careful. I added distilled water to the glycerin xanthan gum mix and hand blended it again to avoid the gel clumps that could happen with xanthan gum. Next, I'm adding the ingredients to add the bubbles and structure to the base. I'm using sodium cockle isothionate and cocomidal probyl betaine for bubbles and stearic acid to thicken it. Sodium cockle isothionate is not fun to breathe in, so wear some protection that will allow you to breathe when you're working with it. Once everything was in the crock pot, I gave it a bit of a stir and set the heat to medium so that it could all melt down. So while that foaming bath base is heating up and cooking, we're gonna jar up our lotions. The first one we're gonna do is think the lavender. Right now I'm filling these lotions up, just using a spatula, but I've been eyeing a lotion filling machine. I don't know if I'm quite there yet. I need to see how popular this product is going to be. Right now I don't think I can justify getting one, but if the popularity of these lotions continue past the initial launch phase, then might just have to do that because this takes a, a while. So here is that lotions, really beautiful consistency. It's like a whipped mousse almost. It's thick and light at the same time, which is a weird way to describe it, but that's how I honestly feel it is. <laughs> like this takes too long and the lotion filling machine, you just pull a lever or lever and it dispenses the lotion pretty quickly. The one downside of that machine that it's kind of finicky to clean and you want to really thoroughly clean it. It has a lot of parts that you'll need to disassemble to make sure it's 100% clean. So there's that, but I've always been a pretty meticulous cleaner. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. As prepared as I thought I was for the launch, it's funny how many things you forget about and a lot of things you just don't know until you've launched. So with all the orders that have come in, I've looked at my supplies and I was like, oh no, I, I had enough for this launch, but it was gonna completely clean me out of a few things. So I had to go and purchase a few more things. So it's very real how profits of sales go right back into the business. And that's definitely what's happening here. Ever since I started the business, I've had different ways of storing my inventory. I've used so many different kinds of shelving. I've never gone and invested in baker's racks before, but I think that's definitely gonna be my next purchase. I'll probably do that today because right now I'm putting my inventory on a fold on a folding table. That's not going to cut it, especially next week when I start to make my soaps and make them regularly. I'm going to need those baker's racks. And for those who remember the slab mold that was given to me by Winston and Walter a while back when I attended the conference, I haven't forgotten about that mold. It's still it's over there but I definitely am going to whip it out to make some soap very soon. The trouble is, is that it's a brand new process. I'm always really nervous about that. People make it look so easy, but <laughs> it's definitely daunting if you haven't done it before. I think my first slab mold soap is gonna be a lavender soap, because from my experience and my recipe, it's pretty slow moving, so I don't have much to worry about there. One of the things that I totally didn't even realize was that I didn't have enough four ounce jars for all of the lotion that I need to make for my orders. So I have jars coming from Wholesale Supplies Plus, but that's not coming until next week, I think. So I've had to put in a rush order at Amazon for more of these jars. I filled up four. I have more to put into another jar. These are the last five four ounce jars I have. So I'm gonna have to stop filling this up and start the other scent so that we can knock out a few orders. So that lotion is now in jars. My foaming bath base is still continuing to cook down. I need to go upstairs and design those labels for those two scents that I made for that lotion. And then that'll be that. I'm a little worried about the jar situation. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to get jars in time. Um, Amazon says they'll come on Thursday. So, We'll see. It's still 
it's still Wednesday, still middle of the week. Everything will be figured out, I promise. <laughs> it's just hard not to worry sometimes. So here is my foaming bath whip base, completely melted. I rubbed a little bit between my fingers. I don't feel any hard steric pellets in here yet. It's completely, completely melted. And I made the perfect amount of foaming bath base. It almost comes right up to the top. In fact, if you don't keep an eye on this, it could bubble over. <laughs> so make sure if you're doing this at this capacity, keep an eye on it because I think you can see it's over in the rim. I got to this just in the nick of time. So now that it's all melted, I'm going to stick blend this guy to just blend everything together. Okay, so I've been stick blending this for about two minutes. We're gonna let this cool down in the crock pot for now but we're gonna add some preservative once it reaches below a specific temperature because I need to add my preservative to this. And once the preservative is added, then I can put this foaming bath whip base in my storage containers and whip it out when I need to whip it up. <laughs> Sorry, that was lame. Hey guys, it's the next day and I have all of these orders to fulfill. It's a pretty large stack. This is one of my most successful launches I've ever had, and I'm so grateful for all of these orders. But before I ship out those orders, I need to get all of these sugar scrubs labeled. And I also need to get the soap that people ordered packaged up and labeled. It's a whole thing, but I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to get that done today. So let's get started. Look at this gorgeous rainbow of sugar scrubs. I like to go in the order of a rainbow, so starting with purple, blue, green, and work our way down. First up are my purple scrubs, which I've named Twilight Woods. This is my lavender scent. Absolutely gorgeous. I love my new design labels. I think they're very on brand. They do take some time to make though. I will say that, but it's worth it. Hopefully down the line, I'll be able to outsource this, but it's good to have a design that I'm happy with before I move on to that step, so that when I'm ready to invest in an in-house graphics design person, I can point them in the right direction in terms of what we're looking for. I didn't show me making these scrubs on camera because I literally made them all in one day. <laughs> I knocked them out. It was the most sugar scrub I'd ever made in one go. I'm so proud of myself for that. I also think that I found my Georgian Bay replacement. We're going to call it High Tide. A lot of people said that I should keep the name, but it just didn't feel right. I want this launch to be a fresh start. I want us to focus on looking forward and not looking backwards. These are tough decisions that you got to make as a business owner, but I think it's the right one. So I finally packaged all of the soap. I've labeled all of the sugar scrubs and the lotions are over there. We can finally start packaging our orders. And when it comes to packaging orders, I like to keep it as organized as possible. Let's see here. What I'm gonna do is spread out the orders in a line here and just collect the products that were ordered on top of that order sheet. We're going from the earliest ordered to the most recent, because I like to go in order. <laughs> so how many can we do here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. First one is a forest fairy soap, hemp body cream, and a twilight woods cream. So we've got, so here's the forest fairy soap. Look how pretty that labeling turned out. Love it. Forest fairy and then two creams, moss and ferns and twilight woods. Here we go. And so now that I have the products gathered, then I can figure out what kind of shipping container. I'm going to put those packages in. I have a few options. I have boxes like this one. I have flat mailers like this. 
I have a whole variety of box sizes. So I'm just gonna be putting them in whatever fits. I really like how this box fits three of my soaps perfectly because a lot of people ended up ordering all three of my limited edition Christmas soaps. And there are a few orders with just one soap. I'm just gonna slip this into a flat mailer like this. So I brought the packages that were on my big stainless steel table over here to finish them off. And the way I finish them off is that these jars are gonna get a seal around the edge so that they don't open up during shipment. We're gonna put some crinkle fill in the boxes so that the objects don't move around too much. And we're gonna put all the soap in little paper bags to protect them even more. And then we're gonna add a few little things and then that should be it. So here is the progress so far. You can see that I'm almost to the point where I weigh each package and then I create the shipping label. But this is basically the station where I finish everything off with a little card, with the frill, taping up the jar so that the sugar scrubs don't spill everywhere, and putting the soap in, in bags so that they're a little bit more protected. And also adding a little sweet treat in there. This is a nice surprise. I usually give samples, but I wasn't able to this time. And look, my helper. My helper came just in time. <laughs> Seahawks just lost. Oh, I'm sorry to and hear that. I need some cheering up, so. Well, I don't know if shipping packages is going to cheer you up, but I could really use your help finishing off these, all these packages. I'm a phone call. Okay. <laughs> he just took a phone call. But yeah, basically, I'm almost there, we're almost to the end goal. It's getting a little messy, so I think for the next time around, I won't have these many packages in my staging area. Maybe I'll work in groups of eight instead of how many packages do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four. We have 15 packages on this table, and I think that's a little too much because I was already losing packing slips um, <laughs> and uh, dropping things, dropping these cards here everywhere. I was seeing that I usually add a sample in these packages, but I just don't have the product right now. And I know that the more I ship and the more I produce, I will have those extra products that I can slip into the packages. So yeah, that'll come, that'll come. But for now, this is my first big shipment since we've reopened and we're just playing catch up right now. So for my packing slips, what I like to do before I close up the box is to just check off not only the item, but the quantity of that item, just to make sure I have everything correct because the quantities could definitely mess you up. And then before I close the box, to add a little bit of paper or tissue paper to further protect my products, like so, and then I'll close it up and this will be ready for weighing. So Kale is helping me by printing out the shipping labels. He really enjoys this process. You like seeing where all the states are. I love the like map that it provides. It goes from like point A, point B, and I love seeing the jerk flying. As the crow flies, quickest way, even though like getting there, it'll be like Yeah. Like, if it's going to like Chicago, it'll go to like Seattle, the Phoenix, and then Chicago. <laughs> You haven't seen one going to Alaska. That was pretty cool. I've seen a package do that. That's pretty awesome. Where in Alaska? Uh, I forget. Nice. But it was a golden bubble package. Sweet. But he's doing that and having someone help is honestly so, I guess, helpful. But <laughs> I'm flying through these packages and just, it's a good process. It's a really good system. So we're now at the point where we're going to be printing our shipping labels. We've connected our mun bin 
we created our PDF with all of the shipping labels and now all that there's left to do is to select the mud bin as our printer, pick the right label size, which is four by six inches. And I think, yeah, we're gonna scale to fit. That's selected. I think that's it. I should do it in one continuous print way faster than your usual, what you used to do before, huh, Kale? Yeah, I'll that Yeah. <laughs> so, it's just so much faster. This is why this machine was such a game changer for my shipping process. I printed them in alphabetical order too, so that's why, oh. yeah, so it ends with Stephanie and begins with, begins with Terry. Oh, anyways, there might be a few names out of whack, so. <laughs> Here you go. Label. Your Boa. scarves. Yep. All right. I'm going out for a night out in town. So that is it. I'm planning to have this video up by Tuesday and my next round of soaps that I'm going to be releasing will be on Monday. So hopefully you're following me on social media. If you're finding that you want a certain soap and you go to the website and it's already sold out, I'm pretty up to date when it comes to Instagram and all that stuff. But if you don't want to buy any of the stuff and you want to make it yourselves, you can also do that. I have the recipe and steps all on my Patreon, which is linked down below. But I want to take a quick moment to thank not only my patrons, but everyone who has bought something from me and made this launch such a huge success. I think we were talking about it and saying that this launch has been our best launch that we've ever done. Yeah, hands down. Yeah, this By is, a long shot. Yeah. and this was the most orders we've fulfilled all in one go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's just so amazing to see how, how much we've improved in our processes and, and everything as the years have gone by. Yeah. I'm just really impressed yeah. by us. Yeah. Good job. I'm impressed by you. Thank you. <laughs> so let us know how you think in the comments below. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.